Hello, Assalamu alaikum viewers. This is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Lectures on Forensic Medicine. If you like my videos, subscribe my channel, share it, and press the bell button. Thank you very much. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. I am starting with the lecture number 11 on autopsy. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And in this lecture, I will be discussing the opening of skull. And the incisions for opening the skull. This is basically made to open the cranial cavity. It starts behind the ear from one mastoid process and extends across the vertex to other mastoid process. And it is bone deep. The flaps of the scale are reflected anteriorly and posteriorly and the skull bone is exposed. This is the incision being made from one mastoid to the other mastoid across vertex. The bone deep flaps are removed and they are being reflected anteriorly and similarly posteriorly. And the skull is exposed. Then the skull is cut horizontally with the saw. Saw may be manual or electrical. Only the outer table is cut. This is important that with the saw, the outer table of the skull is cut. The inner table is removed with the chisel. And when we remove the skull cap, the meninges are exposed and they are also horizontally cut in the line of the cut of the bone and then the brain is exposed. This is the saw being used all around horizontal cut is made on only in the external table of the skull. Then with the chisel the internal table is cut so that the meninges and the brain may not be damaged. And this is the skull cap is removed and you can see the meninges and brain underneath. Like this. Now the incision for the neck. The body is placed with a wooden block under the neck and it is extended. A V-shaped incision is made and the limbs of the V start from the mastoid process and runs obliquely downwards and medially across the line of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and they meet in the middle at the manubrium sternum. The structures of the neck may be exposed by further elevation of the skin. A fine dissection is needed. Subcutaneous tissues are removed as far as the arch of the mandible. And in suspected cases where there is interference at, at the level of the neck, a layer by layer fine dissection is done and a detailed examination of each muscle, thyroid gland, larynx, trachea should be done. Then in CN for the opening of chest and abdomen, they are of three types. Either it is extension of the neck in CN, running down in the midline, up to the pubis, avoiding umbilicus, or 
starting from the thyroid cartilage straight up to pubis, avoiding umbilicus. And the third is U-shaped or V-shaped in CN, starting from the tip of the shoulders, running obliquely downwards and medially across the nipples, either it is above the nipple or below the nipple, and to meet the opposite in CN at the ziphy sternum, and then down the midline to the pubis, avoiding umbilicus. This is the uh, pictorial diagram showing the straight eye shaped in CN and this extends from chin, chin to symphysis pubis and runs in the midline avoiding umbilicus. And this is uh, routinely used in CN. And the advantage is that it is simple and convenient. Then this is Y shaped primary in CN for the opening chest and abdomen. It extends obliquely downward from the 0.2 to 3 centimeter behind the lobule of the ear, that is behind the mastoid process, and they meet in the manubrium. And then vertically down from the medium to the symphysis pubis. This is preferred when the detailed study of the neck structure is required in case of asphyxial deaths. Then a modified Y shape or it is a U shape which start from the tip of the shoulder or the acromial heads and they run across the chest either above the nipple or below the nipple, nipple below the breast and meet in the zip sternum and from there it runs downward in the midline to the symphysis pubis and these primary in CN Usually they are skin deep. Now why to avoid umbilicus? It is avoided for the cosmetic reasons because it is a fibromuscular structure and is difficult to cut, difficult to stitch and will cause disfiguring. So that's why it is avoided. And some concealed injury may be there. So during the cutting umbilicus, it may be missed. There is another precaution during making the incision for opening the chest and abdomen that if there is any injury in the way of the incision, it should also be avoided. Now opening the thorax and testing for pneumothorax that if you suspect pneumothorax and during the opening the chest cavity, this is the procedure to be adopted. That before opening the chest cavity, the presence or absence of pneumothorax should be established. After cutting the skin and muscles along the side wall of the chest, the pocket along the side wall of the chest wall is filled with water. And a stab in CN is made under water into the chest cavity and there is a pneumo, if there is pneumothorax, the air will gush out. Now the opening the chest cavity, after reflecting the skin of the chest wall, the costal cartilages are cut just medial to costochondral junction, costochondral junction, and it will open the chest cavity. The cutting of the capsular ligaments of the sternoclavicular joint disarticulates the joint. Then the first rib is cut, starting from one side, the underneath connections of this cut portion will be removed and the piece will be removed. This is the removing of the skin flap. Now, if you have to check for the ear embolism, then before starting the examination of heart, the pericardial sac is filled with water. And with the help of scalpel, the right side of the heart is punctured and air in the ventricle will come out. So thank you very much.
This was all about the incisions for opening the body cavities. Take care. Allah Hafiz.